Good day, everybody. It's June 28th, 2023. This video is probably not going to be up for the next couple days, but Rachel and I are about to go on a cruise right now. We are going to take the, the Big Bear Lake tour with the guided tour. Um, so there's going to be commentary on a lot of the cruise, which is going to be awesome. I've never, I've been on the lake once in eight years, guys, the eight years that I've been here. So I'm really looking forward to this. And we got her to get off work. Hey guys. So she can be I here with you. us. I miss being here. <laughs> I thought I was going to miss the boat ride, but I hurried up and scrubbed all those tubs that needed to be scrubbed and now we're <laughs> off on the boat. Oh yeah. So excited. I'm so excited too. Oh, you know what? You can see us both right, right there. Yeah. So also two things. Uh, we're almost there, but uh, you guys, if you could find some, some other camera rather than a GoPro, I'm telling you guys, all my GoPros have serious issues. They overheat like crazy. On the hiking video I did yesterday, which will be posted tomorrow, it was a seven mile hike, one of the most beautiful hikes up here. Um, I'm, I'm telling you guys, it overheated about nine different times and I had four different batteries. So just, uh, it's, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. And then also we have a good friend up here. Her name's Sandra. Um, she's like a mom to me kind of. Um, she has a GoFundMe and anything I can do to ever help you guys or anyone that I care about. Um, she has a bird who's, who's been alive for years and years and years, but the bird um, needs some like serious work and stuff like that. And so obviously for those of you who are attached to your animals as I am, I can, I can totally understand. So in the description, I'm gonna post the GoFundMe um, and uh, yeah, if anyone wants to help her out, let her mind rest a bit, that would be awesome. But anyway, we're about to pull up to the uh, boat place. I thought we would do the little ride up here so you guys can see where it is. So right now we are on a street called Payne and we are going to be going here. We just gotta find a place to park. Oh, perfect, we'll park in the back right there. Marina, the Big Bear Marina. And we will park right here. All right guys, so we'll see you guys in just a, just a couple moments. And we're, we're using 5K with the wide frame, 10 bits of the color, which is like millions and millions of color those are some of the new features on the on the gopro 11 but as i said these things overheat like freaking crazy but hope you guys enjoy the cruise take care see you in a minute bye all right guys here we are all right so we just walk right up here you guys Hopefully the camera's rolling. So guys, get ready for about, on this hour and a half boat ride, get ready for about five or six overheating on the damn thing. On the dang thing. Yeah guys, I've missed so much lately. I'm so excited to go on this boat ride. So, so are we. Especially because the lake is so full, it's so beautiful. This is a treat. And they've been asking about you There's too. There's actually water in the lake. Yeah, not yeah. Not just a dry boat. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what it says here. Just so you guys can see what some of these signs say. Max Shack, official way in Big Bear Lake. Floating docks with movement. All right, let's see here. All right. Maybe, I don't know if the boat tour is at the very end or not. It said boat tour right here, didn't it? There he is. Paul. Hey. Give me a hug, bro. How are you doing, man? Good, good to see We're you, We're not man. on right now, right? Yeah. Are you on right now? Yeah, yeah. Guys, this is the man who made me feel welcome in this town and probably why I'm still here. Captain Paul. Here. Ca Captain Paul. Yeah, Captain Paul. We're going to get ready to go in here in a minute. Just gonna... Okay, we'll, 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 just, we'll just wait outside? Yeah, we can wait on the boat. Okay. 
Awesome, awesome, bro. Yeah, yes. My big bear boat right here. Is this it right here? Dude, dude, you drive this thing every day? Holy yeah, moly, bro. All kinds of weather. That's in, that's incredible. That's incredible. Guys, I'm telling you right now, this is the one and only Big Bear tour because you have the most amazing guy, beautiful heart. I'm humble. <laughs> very, very, very humble. And we ride Harleys together, but not not recently because uh, I just got mine back and he's. Well, we will be right again. Oh, dude, this is awesome. This is so cool. This is so cool. Our own captain. So, how many people do you think will? I could fit 30 on board. How many do you think will be on right now? I think just you guys. That would be awesome. Are you serious? I'm, I'm gonna go. Let's just go. Let's just go. <laughs> I'm go double check. Dude, if we could get a private tour from Paul, oh my gosh! You guys, that would we be. Get so lucky. <laughs> Dude. We really do. We're so blessed. It's not just luck. It's blessing. Many, many. So it's. 318 about guys this watch one of you guys got it for me it's our good friend john from australia look it even says australia on it he sent it to me all the way from australia and when i go hiking i don't wear it because i'm afraid i'm gonna bang it so i hope john sees that i actually do wear the watch no you're not supposed to wear it yeah <laughs> he's like it's it's above the lake proof <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to wear it on a boat. <laughs> oh, guys. There she is, Miss America. Missed you guys. <laughs> I really did. Most of them say you make this channel even better. So. I agree. <laughs> Whoever's saying that, keep those comments coming. <laughs> <laughs> this would be epic if it's just us. This would be absolutely epic. Guys, I wish I wouldn't have said that because then I could have pretended like it's our own private boat tour. Just be like, oh yeah, we reserved it just for us, you know? Put an act on. I can tell it's going to be really breezy. I'm probably yes. going to be putting... I brought a sweater and a poncho. Good. I'm the coldest website. person you'll ever Big Bear meet. Weather and More. Big Bear Weather? And More. Big Bear Weather and More. Thanks for asking. It's a YouTube channel. Did you drive up to Snow Summit during the blizzard? Dude, I drive every storm. Yep, yep, say, every sure, single storm. For sure, me and my coworker ran into uh, oh, Snow Summit. Oh, were you actually one of the guys working? I was one of the When I was trying guys. to walk out there? Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. Hey, man, come here. <laughs> we, did check out, we checked out your YouTube channel good, afterwards. Good, man. Uh, I'm surprised you're able to make it all over the place the way you were. You know what, man? It, it's, it's, crazy. it's, yeah, I'm a little bit nuts, but I have, a passion for being out in the worst type of weather. Hey, nothing. I mean, everyone's got a passion. Dude, I won't fault you for that. Brings me, brings joy into my heart. And, and, and you know, I, I like the fact that we got someone up here who's representing Big Bear on YouTube. Thanks, man. So Thank you. Cool. Thank cool you. You're doing what you're doing. I've never missed a storm in the eight years that, that I've lived here. I know, I've, we were, we're, we're, we're watching. We're, we're, 3, we were three thousand three hundred videos. Through, we're your videos. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, bro. And then we were from there. We're kind of just keeping track of how bad things were with your videos. On, cause bro, when we were during the blizzard, we were just going from our home to work and then from work back to home yeah so yeah totally kind of like a bigger picture when we look watch your, watch your YouTube. you know what man if you guys can't get all the info you need when you just watch it send me a comment because i respond right away um okay. i i want to make sure you guys can get to your jobs because without you guys helping our tourists out up here we don't get to live here yeah yeah. You guys make it happen. You got. It uh, takes a uh, takes a village, right? It really it does. It really does. Yeah, it good seeing you again. Great to see you too. What's your see first you name again? Straight, chance. 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 Guys, that's Chance. Say hi to Chance. Hey guys. And uh, yeah, yeah, another wonderful local Big Barian up here. So, yeah, Chance. Thank you, man. Have a great trip. Yeah, man. Appreciate it very much. That's awesome. Oh, so cool. that's so cool. Yeah. So when I was trying to sneak out on Snow Summit during the huge storm um, to go record, like walk out on, on the slopes and stuff. They were there and we I- Try to stop people. Yeah, yeah, them. yeah. For insurance reasons, I'm assuming. Yep. So I didn't want to bother them, but yeah, I'll shut up. I got about four minutes. I gotta wait in case anybody shows up. Sure, sure. Let me get your watch. I'll, I'll forward it four minutes. There you go. <laughs> Do you guys sell Sprite in there? Yep. Do you really? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Sprite, like beer. Too. Real quick. I just celebrated 10 years, June 23rd of no alcohol. Good for you. Thanks, bro. 
Dude, Paul, it's yeah, good, it's good to see Paul, man. It's good to see you, too, bro. <laughs> Thanks, dude. We had the bike out, buddy. You were nicer, bro. Me and my girl went for a ride around the lake, stopped and had dinner. You gotta hit me up. I'd like to go riding with you yeah, guys. Yeah, it was just kind of a last minute thing, you know, but I will. And please tell me you take debit card for, for, for this stuff. Oh, no M&M's. Grab whatever, babe. Yeah, no one should be on this yeah. for the rest of the day. Okay, thanks, babe. That'll make you hot. <laughs> this is our other captain right here. This is Captain Tracy. Captain Tracy? Captain Crashy. <laughs> Captain Crashy. <laughs> I call her Captain Sandy for below deck. That but, sounds yeah. like more fun, Captain Crashy. Captain Crashy. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you, Captain Crashy. Nice to see you. <laughs> Um, I don't even have the water, so I'm just going to get Okay, it. perfect. Yeah, yeah. sounds good, babe. Sounds good, babe. The ducks will follow you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to talk negatively about myself and ducks, but, you know. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Captain, Captain Crashy. Crashy. <laughs> hey there. Uh, yeah, have a good one, guys. We, Thank you very much. Paul, dude. We're finally going to do up, it. How many bro? years have we tried to do this, bro? <laughs> For many years. Right? Many years. Oh, yeah. I I can't believe I'm actually on this. Do you need help? No, I got it. Am I allowed to eat these on board? Of course. Oh, okay. Oh, well, right? She can eat on board, right? Yeah. Eat can those chips. Drink? So you guys have a liquor li or, or, or wait, no, you don't need a liquor license to serve beer, right? Right. You can't have it on the dock, but you can have it on the boat. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's really cool. I'm going to stay tied up while I give you my safety speech. Yes, sir. Is I'm required to do that by law? I am. Okay. Trust me, I, I need to hear it. This is waiting for connection. Testing, testing. I gotta walk away from the speaker, a little feedback. Anyways, welcome on board everybody, the Big Bear Cruiser. I'll be your captain today, Captain Paul. And we're gonna be going out for the next three or four hours. No, just <laughs> an hour and a half turbo. Captain um, Comedian. Captain Comedian. Anybody under 13 must be wearing a life jacket. And if you act under 13, you need to wear a life jacket. Or you go overboard. Or you go overboard. Just like when you get on an airplane, they give you this Silly speech about how to buckle a seatbelt. It's required by law. I have to do the same thing on the boat. So above head right here are the orange life jackets or adult life jackets. Okay. okay. You never had to use them in the five years I've been the captain of this boat. Ten years being a captain overall. Um, but we're required to show you what to do. Just pull it down, put it over your head, buckle the buckle, and away you go safely. Okay. All right? Yeah. Um, there's two fire extinguishers on board, one in the front by the throwable life ring, the one back here by the captain's helm, okay. and you're welcome to move around during the tour. You can go from side to side. At various times I might say, hold on, in case we run into some rough water. Okay. Now I gotta run into getting the boat untied in the back. Okay. Wow, this is awesome. This is awesome. Kind of reminds me of the boat that I used to compare. You know, I'm gonna have a problem here. <laughs> Hold on. Not doing my skills very good right now. I think we, I like mm -hmm. took your mind off of it. Guys, you have no idea how good it is to see Paul. Like, like this guy, okay. as I said, he, he made me feel so comfortable when I moved. He let me in Vons 30 minutes after it closed to buy a space heater. Yo! Cut this off. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Yeah. All right, guys. Here we go. We you are have anything. Off. Cool. No. Thanks, guys. See you later. <laughs> Thank you. That door is not closed. Oh yeah. You ever get that? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I got it for sure, bro. Are you kidding me? Hope. Yeah, pull that latch up and over. There we go. That's it. That's it. We're safe Don't to go now. To turn it back on. It is. <laughs> it is. Oh. So you want me to do it as I do a regular tour? Oh, 100%. 100%. Okay. 
So for those of you who don't know it, Big Bear Lake is a man-made lake. And if you want to know what it looked like in this valley before they flooded it out, if you look across the lake to the North Shore, you see all those trees and grassy meadows, that's what the bottom of this valley used to look like. Before it was discovered in the year 1845, the Serrano Indians had lived up here for 2,000 years. And if you know the Serrano Indians, they run the little casino down here at the bottom of the hill called the Yamaba Casino. Back in the early 1840s, there was a settler that came west. His name was Benjamin Wilson. And Benjamin Wilson came to California. He was an entrepreneur. And he met a Hispanic girl that he fell in love with. Her name was Linda. Last name was Yorba. And you guys know the area as Yorba Linda. No way. <laughs> there are big landowners down there. And back then, California was still part of Mexico. And the Mexican governor, for a land, for a white president, gave a land grant to Benjamin Wilson that went from Santa Monica to Pasadena along the foothills all the way out here to Redlands which is just below the hill right behind our marina. And in Redlands, Benjamin Wilson had a cattle ranch and the local Indians figured out it was easier to steal his cattle <laughs> than it was to go hunting. <laughs> so after the third time, he had enough of that nonsense <laughs> and he went ahead and formed a posse of 20 of his men. They wanted to follow the Indians to see if they could get their cattle back. They didn't know where they were going, how far they were going, or how big of a lead they had. But they brought food and water, provisions, for three days. Unfortunately, it took three days to get to the top of the mountain following the Indian trail, which is right behind our marina up there at the top. Let's see. And when Benjamin Wilson got up there, he looked down to this valley and he saw some big animals. And he told his men, let's go get our cattle back. Only to discover when he got down here, they were looking at grizzly bears. <laughs> and that's how we got our name, Big Bear. Okay. The only place known in Southern California to ever have grizzly bears. Wow. Wow. I, that's, I well, never knew that. they continued on on that third day when they got up here. And they got down to a place over here to the east end of the valley, a place we call Starvation Flats. That's a street name. And it's named for that because they got into a battle with the Indians. And four of those 20 men got wounded in that battle, including Benjamin Wilson. Well, they didn't know if the Indians were going to come back and attack again. So they fortified their encampment. They couldn't really go anywhere because of the wounded. And after six days, they were pretty desperate. They needed water. So on the seventh day, they snuck out in the morning, a couple of men, to search for water. And they found some down on the other end of the valley over here in a big, steep granite rock canyon. There were some puddles of water left over on the granite rocks from snow melt. And when they got back to camp, they told Benjamin Wilson not only about their find of the water, but about the canyon. Well, he wanted to see it. So as soon as he was rolling up to travel, they took him down to this canyon. And when he saw it, he single-handedly changed the future of California with his vision. He saw that canyon. And he thought, if I could dam this up, I could have a gravity-driven irrigation system and a year-round supply of water. It was his vision. So when he got back down the hill later that summer of 1845, he started talking to other ranchers about his idea of turning his cattle ranch into orange groves. He knew the Transcontinental Railroad was coming west and it was going to go through San Bernardino and he'd have a way to get his orange crop back to the big city markets in the Midwest and the East Coast. Wow. So he started talking to other ranchers in the summer of 1845. And by 1846, he had raised $75,000 cash to build a dam and start a water company. 
So they got a hold of some engineers and some architects. They came back up here in the summer of 1846 to pick a location to build a dam and start a water company. They wound up choosing that same granite rock canyon where they first found the water. And what they decided to do was build a 50 foot high granite rock dam. Now that presented several challenges. One of those challenges was how do you keep a 50 foot high rock dam from not falling over from water pressure? <laughs> yeah. And ironically, they didn't know there was any cement in Southern California. So they made the decision to import 8,000 barrels of cement from oh. Europe. Holy moly. And they sailed into a lonely one dock harbor that we now call the LA Harbor the largest in the United States. And it took over four years to import all those barrels of cement. And what they would do is they'd put them on a wagon train and bring them up to Big Bear, which was a six-day journey. The other obstacle they had to come over was they had to find an easier way to get here than the way they were coming up, which took too long. Remember, there was no roads and no trails. So what they did was they discovered the Cajon Pass, Highway 15, like you go to Vegas. They crisscrossed back and forth along that white canyon until they got to the top of the foothills in the high desert. And they made a right turn and traveled along the high desert foothills until they got to this low spot over here across the lake on the North Shore. And they crossed over into the valley from there First on horseback and wagons, and later on, once the dam started retaining water, they crossed over for a long time on rafts. And they pulled those rafts across the lake with a giant rope, just like you saw in the old Daniel Boone movies. The other obstacle they had to overcome was the trees. See, the dam was going to be 50 feet, and the trees got up to 100 feet. Wow, 100 feet. So they had to cut the trees down because they'd be sticking up everywhere down at the ground level. And they hired the only logger that they knew about who was working the hills of Pasadena. When they hired him, he was in charge of hiring the man and training as many as he needed because it took seven years to log out this valley. And once they cut the trees down to build themselves log cabins to protect the men from the grizzly bears, and the cold and the Indians, they started bringing their families up to Big Bear. Now, there wasn't much to do back in the early days up here in Big Bear at nighttime, so they did a lot of reading. Did a lot of reading by candlelight and lanterns, mostly historical books, the Old Testament, the New Testament, books about various types of religions. And the man that was in charge of all the operations up here was named Joseph Smith. And when he was done logging Big Bear Lake, he took his men and their families to the territory of Utah. That they Smith. started the Mormon religion right here in Big Bear. No way! Way! No way! That's awesome! Now when they designed <laughs> yeah. the dam, they told Benjamin Wilson it would take five years for the lake to fill up. Well, the weatherman was just as wrong in the 1850s as he is today. And the lake filled up in one year. A fantastic snowfall record amount. Of course, you know we had a dry spell in California for years, and this lake was down 19 feet. Yep, Last that's right. season at the end of the season. That's right. But we had a fabulous snowfall, which was recorded by Big Bear Weather. Thank and you. You can see all <laughs> the snow melt filled up our lake again, so we're pretty happy about it. Now over here to the left, this lodge is the oldest, longest running lodge in the valley. It wasn't the first one, but it's called Loganita Lodge. And Loganita Lodge is located on Loganita Point. And we have a couple videos there, guys. If you get the picture, there was a lot of logging going on up here. There's a playlist of all the lodging. Now, a couple of facts about Benjamin Wilson. You often hear his name on the news if you're in the L.A. broadcast area. Because they will say, hi, on top of Mount Wilson. They show you the smog of L.A. or the lights. 
Well, Wilson's in downtown LA, and it's named for Benjamin Wilson, because he went on to become the first mayor of Los Angeles when it incorporated in 1865. And then a very cool thing happened. Not only did Benjamin Wilson have a hand in changing the future of Southern California, but he had a big hand in changing the future of the world. Because he's the grandfather, the greatest grandson, that became a World War II hero by the name of General George Patton. Helped change the world and save the world from the Axis. The people of Axis. Anyways, along the shoreline over here, this is a peninsula, it's not really a shoreline. And behind these houses is a creek. And that creek is a two-finger creek, and it goes up into the hills. And the name of that creek is Sawmill Creek. Ah, Sawmill. And it drops into Sawmill Bay, which is directly in front of us. Sawmill Creek and Sawmill Bay, at the height of operations, have 20 sawmills operating up here. Remember, they were cutting trees down of all different sizes, different kinds of wood. The big trees and big sawmills were going for the railroad ties for that transcontinental railroad that was coming. So Benjamin Wilson's investors were soon getting a return on their money. As when they unloaded those barrels of cement on the wagon trains that came up here, they sent them back down the hill with lumber. At first to build the town of Redlands, later on for the railroad ties for the Transcontinental Railroad, and also for the Port of Los Angeles that they started growing. Wow! Wow! The Big Bear Lake has 22 miles of shoreline. Down the middle of the lake, from the dam to the other end behind us, the lake is seven miles long. And the widest part of the lake is about a mile and a half wide. Now as we pull into Sawmill Bay, you can see Sawmill Creek. It's no longer lined with sawmills, but condos and million dollar houses. in front of us down there you see a red boat on the dock and in front of that red boat is a light green house and that house is the Serrano Indian Chief's house kind of his winter white house if you will now that big hotel structure right next door to it you might never be able to see it from there but it's a lot of rock beautiful design that house is that is not a hotel it is the largest house on the lake that house has 10 bedrooms, 8 bathrooms, 6 car garage, movie studio, wine cellar, gymnasium, bar, and a billiard room. That house also has 2 elevators. Now when I tell you who built that house, you probably won't forget about it. Because the guy that built it is the inventor of bubble wrap. <laughs> no way. No way. Somebody had to do it. <laughs> anyway, so next time you get a package from Amazon, and you open it up, we all do it, don't care how old you are, we all start popping those little little bubbles in here. Every time. You'll think of this big house right here on Sawmill Bay. That's the one right there? Yep. Here, in the corner of this bay, lives our most famous resident. Most famous resident, his dad bought this The voiceover, property. the voiceover guy. Yeah, his dad bought this property the last day of World War II, August of 1945. Bought the property for $800 and built the house for under 2000 And from there he created some of the best memories we ever had growing up. Just like his dad before him, he comes out here every day with my tour boat, and he gets up on his deck. We can't see the house yet, but he grabs a megaphone and he talks to all the kids and all the passengers are on board, keeping away the great memories we grew up with. 
And the first thing he's going to say to you when he comes out here is, eh, what's up, Doc? <laughs> the voice of Bugs Bunny. Yes. His name was Mel Blank. Mel Blank did over a thousand cartoon character voices, including Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Yosemite Sam, Tweety Bird, The Rooster, even the voice of Barney Rebel on the Flintstones. Oh, wow. Barney, too. Wow. Now his son carries on the tradition that brown house back there behind the green canopy, the flag flying on the porch. And the son carries on dad's tradition 78 years later, coming out and talking to us on the tour boat. Guys, that's Blank. that's Mel Blank's son's place now, Noel Blank. It used to be Mel's. Right when we pass this, it's that brown house right there. And hopefully when he's home, he leaves the window shade up. Let's me know he's home. When he's not home, he puts the window shade down. So I don't waste too much time in here. But hopefully he'll see the boat and he'll come out and say hello. And I'll see if I can get his attention. And what's up, Doc? There he is. <laughs> Give a little wave to Don't Blank. You don't need me, you already said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a filming going on, so we're filming you right now. Thank you, no. Thanks, no. Yeah. He's done a pretty good. <laughs> Wow, he complimented you on your on your Bugs Bunny voice, bro. Yeah, he tells me all the time. Oh my gosh, dude, I'm I'm like getting teary. I do Donald Duck too. <laughs> Dang. He does Porky Pig for us. Does Yosemite Sam, Tweety Bird, Sylvester. That greenhouse back there used to be the office for all twenty sawmills. His dad bought it when they were done logging the lake, and he turned it into a guest house. And he started inviting all his friends from Warner Brothers Studios up here in the 40s and 50s, making this a, home, a destination for the rich and famous. All the great Hollywood stars stayed there. Carol Lombard, Clark Gable, Lucille Ball, wow. Humphrey Bogart. Wow. They all stayed up here one time or another. Wow. Even Big Bear, a destination resort. Guys, those are big names. <laughs> those are big Hollywood names. I mean, that was the Hollywood's elite of the elite. Yeah, we come out of this bay, we're gonna make a left turn back into the wind for a little bit. We have wind every day up here on the lake. As you know, in science, hot air rises. And when it gets warm down below in San Bernardino, that hot air rises up the hill, comes up the top. When there's no resistance at the dam, it flows right down the middle of the lake pretty much every afternoon. Now when they started crossing the lakes on those rafts I was telling you about, they crossed over here to a pier. And you can see this pier over here on the left shoreline. It's got a little tunnel cut through it. And that rock pier was cut and built by those Italian stone cutters they brought in to build a dam. There used to be a wood extension on the end of that pier, and they would receive the motorized ferries in the 20s that were carrying the Model T's and the Model A's up to Big Bear. It would take a Model T and Model A about three days to get to Big Bear back then. Now, if you leave at the right time, you can do it in about three hours. That rock pier and the house at the end of it, a rock house, are historical landmarks and that rock house at the end of the pier on the right side of it. Right there. Was the trading post where they traded with the Indians from the old and they had all the groceries and the supplies for all the different programs up here. You had guys that were moving wagons, blowing up the sides of the hills of the Grand Rock Canyon. They had them chipping away at the rocks and moving them into position. You had guys cutting trees down, working the sawmills, and all kinds of activities. That rock house up there now has been donated to the Archdiocese of San Bernardino and turned into a convent. So 
that's a convent right there. That that house just just to the right there is a convent. That's now, Big Bear Lake, awesome. right here where we're traveling at, has an altitude level of 6,752 feet. And if you got to do the math on that, that is a mile and a quarter. As we say in Big Bear, we're a mile and a quarter closer to heaven. <laughs> I used to live in Denver. Now as we get on all these red buoys up here, if we look to the left, through the trees, back there, you will see a snow-covered mountain. And you get a good view of it from right here. It's going to get better as we travel along. That snow-covered mountain back there is called San Bicardio. We call it San G for short. Give you a little perspective, Santee at the top is 12,500 feet. That's about double the altitude of where we're at right here. In fact, Santee is the third highest mountain in North America. You got Mount McKinley in Alaska, you got Mount Whitney up by Mammoth in Central California, and you have Santee right here in San Bernardino. All the snow that melts off the San G forms a river at the bottom of the mountain that goes all the way out to the ocean in Orange County wow. between Huntington and Newport Beach, the Santa Ana River. Drive so right over it on PCAs. Every day for years. There it is. Now over here on the left, before we jump into this bay, you got a yellow house. A one-story yellow house. That house belongs to the actor. You might know Michael Richards, or better known as Cosmos, Cosmos Kramer on the Psycho Show. And he's just as funny in person as he is on the show. Whenever you, if you go, hi, Michael, and he does that little shuffle slide that he does on the Psycho Show. Which house is it again? That big one right there, okay. Yep, and he does that. You go, hey, Michael, he goes like this. <laughs> that, little side, that little shake that he does. When he enters Jerry's apartment. <laughs> now this bay right here is called Metcalf Bay, and Metcalf Bay is the second largest bay on the lake. Metcalf Bay is the home of two distinctively different marinas. And if we look down here at the end of the bay, to the left side, you got a blue roof on a building down there. That marina is called Holloways. Holloways. Holloways is celebrating 113 years of operation this summer. Wow. It's actually still owned and operated by the same two families that started it. Wow. Now also over here on the marina, to the right side of that blue roof, you can see some black shit masks sticking up. An American flag popped around in the wind. That is part of the pirate ship. That pirate ship, you might have seen in the movie. Have you seen the Goonies? No way. That's called the Time Bandit. Made for the movie The Goonies. It's a replica of a 17th century pirate ship. And when they were done filming, they cut it in half, took off the mask, put it on trucks, and brought it to Big Bear. And we put it back together up here. That's awesome. As part of that crew. That's awesome. I was also a bartender on that ship. So don't feel like you missed out at all. Because I know all the corny pirate jokes. <laughs> what is a pirate's favorite letter of the alphabet? R. You think it's the R, <laughs> but it's the C. <laughs> A, B, C. Ah, good crowd, good crowd. <laughs> Alright, since you like that one, I got one more corny pirate joke for you. Bring him. What kind of gasoline would you use on a pirate ship? How about Arco? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> also, in this bay is another oh. marina. This one is completely different. That's so funny. This marina over here to the right is called Pleasure Point. Pleasure Point is a private marina where you could buy and own a piece of this lake. 
You can buy a 20 foot boat for $25,000. Or you can rent a boat slip at any marina for about $1,000 a year. So hypothetically speaking, 25 years to hit the break even point. And that proves something really important in life. Some people have more money than they have sense. <laughs> now on that hill behind the marina back there, you can see it goes up and it dips down in the back. And there's a little lake up there. That little lake is called Cedar Lake. And it's got a camp on it called Cedar Lake Camp. Yep, they made two movies with the same name up there. You might remember one called Parent Trap. No way. In the 1990s with Lindsay Lohan. And the original version was in the 60s with a Disney star named Haley Mills. Wow. Why did I have a crush on her? <laughs> <laughs> up there on that lake up there, they have a water mill made to look like one they used to film a TV show that was supposed to be Lake Tahoe, but they filmed it right here for 13 seasons. They filmed Bonanza right up here in Big Bear. Oh. And everybody in town got to know the Cartwrights. Up there on those rocks on that hillside, there's a caves and all those rocks up there. And every week, a little boy would get lost. And his dog always came to the rescue. For eight years, they filmed Lassie. Wow. Lassie was filmed right up in there. No way. John Wayne made 10 movies up here. Clint Eastwood made two. And even the Kipper, Ronald Reagan, made an episode of Wagon Train right here on Mid Cafe. That's so crazy. Right here, water scan in front of us, going down through this movie line, was a man named Elvis Presley. No. And a movie called Kissing Cousins. Wow. Now, I was fortunate enough I to be the doc manager over here. I had a pleasure of working for five years. And right across from the marina, on the right side, is a house. You can see that house over there. It's got bed posts sticking up and a bunch of rocks along the shoreline. You can barely see the house from here. But it is a six million dollar U-shaped mansion that was built for logs to J-Lo, Jennifer Lopez. Yep, I'm not talking to her anymore. <laughs> Five years I worked here, waved high to her every time, and she never invited me over. <laughs> Broke my heart. J-Lo's house right here on Mid Cafe. friend Jordan, babe, when the tour boats would go by his dad's house on well, the curb up here, they would always say, and that's Dr. Tree. Gary Grove's house. And we stopped oh, yeah. the lake with beautiful rainbow trout, bass, cactus, perch, and bluegill. We have three major fishing tournaments every year, where the prize money goes all the way up to $15,000. You know, Big Bear Lake is located in San Bernardino County. But what you might not remember is San Bernardino County is the largest county in the United States. Yes, yep. In fact, I've been told nine of the original 13 colonies would fit in the boundaries of San Bernardino County. That's interesting. That's interesting. We are the only Four Season Resort in Southern California. Of course, winter is the busiest season with all the snow activities, skiing and snowboarding. Followed by summertime with all the great activities in and around the lake and the village. Followed by fall. Fall is beautiful up here. All the trees turn red, yellow, and orange. And we have the number one rated Oktoberfest in all of California. The Oktoberfest runs for six weeks from mid-September all the way to the end of October. And if you come home and partake in the festivities, they will give you a free ride home, door to door, as courtesy of the activity event for safety reasons. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
That's a great. Are you cold? You don't have to sit right here, babe. I just want you next to me. Yeah. And I'm worried about the, the, yeah, the sound. Up over here on the left shoreline. You can see a green canopy over a boat now. And you can also see a gateway coming down the seawall. Now, if you look up from there, tucked into the trees, there's a car cap that goes up to a house. And that house up there belongs to the extremely talented, the must love, and the dearly missed. Someday we're going to have a house like that. Someday we're going to have a house like that. Looks like you put a golf course on that lawn. <laughs> oh, man. That's that's the nicest lawn I've seen up here. It is. That's, in, that's incredible. Oh, my gosh. Wait, that's what I want. That's what I want. So years ago, when I first came up here with with my my best friend Jordan Groves, his dad's like a big time guy in the medical industry, and they have a had a huge 8,000 square foot house that wrapped or 9,000 around the on, on Cove Street. And every time these boats would drive by, they'd be and that's Dr. Gary Groves' house. And I'm like, dude, like that's crazy, dude. His dad is. A, yeah, and I'd be there, hanging out. They're like, that's Dr. Gary Grove's house. Now, coming up over here, on the left shoreline, there's an old famous house on the lake. The one at the end of the beach. It's a brown house with a white window. That house is called the Zebra Room. You might remember, in the 1920s, the United States passed a law called Prohibition. Prohibition meant drinking and gambling was illegal. Well, there was a New York City gangster named Bugsy Seagull. No way. That was sent to LA and Hollywood to make money off the unions and all the booze. There was a lot of growth in LA back in the 20s. Right there, man. Well, they passed that law when gambling and drinking was illegal. They got into Bugsy's money. He got smart. He came to Big Bear and he bought that house. Windows. For the simple reason, it sticks out the front 
breakfast in the lake. Because he turned that house into a brothel and a casino. And up on the second deck, he put a telescope pointing straight ahead at the dam. And they could see the cops coming up over the hill. <laughs> and by the time they drove around the lake shore awesome. to get over here to the zebra room, they chased all the girls out, they hit all the booze, and they gave these women underneath the house in secret caves. They never did catch them. They did sneak up on them one time. They got wind of it about a mile away. They had no choice but to throw all the evidence in the lake. Uh, not the girls, just the booze. <laughs> and, and for 20 years, evidence of Bugsy Siegel when washed up on the beach is over here on the south shore. Wow. Bugsy made so much money at the zebra room right there with all the shenanigans that went on. That when prohibition was over, he got together with a child in front of him. Is there someone in the window there? Lansky, and the two of them financed and built the first hotel and casino in a dirt town in Nevada called Las Vegas. The Tropicana Hotel. Matter of fact, we just found out the Tropicana's been blown up and torn down for a baseball stadium for the Oakland A's. Go figure. That's lame. I mean, I I love my baseball. At least I used to, but... Here comes one of our other tour boats. And I have a tradition with my friend, Captain Chris. We go buy one of them. And yell and wave. Yeah. So on the count of three, I want you guys to help me out. Okay. Make all the tourists feel welcome. One. Just say hi. How's it going? Yeah, <laughs> That's so that is so cool. Now over here to the left, this beautiful house with the rock landscape and the trees. Right here, guys. Also a writer and a producer of a TV show. His name is Mike Judd. And he does Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Nice. That's Mike Judd's house. Wow. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, fire. Yeah. yeah. Shut up, Davis. Shut up, Davis. Boulder Bay straight ahead, guys. Now, if everybody will take a moment and look to the starboard side of the ship, that's the right side, and look up at the top of the hill, on top of the tree line. You see that big rock formation up there? Castle Rock. Right yep. there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's called Castle Rock. Castle Rock is the most popular hiking trail when you there. Remember we did that about a month ago, guys? Stops. You can hike up there on the highway in about yeah. an hour. That's right. And you get down in about 15 minutes. It's a lot easier going down at 7,000 feet than going up. Yes, sure. yes, it is. Yeah, guys, right there. That's Castle Rock. You will get spectacular pictures and a good view from up there. Also, here on Boulder Bay, one of the significant things that helped Big Bear grow was its summer camps. And the very first summer camp opened on this bay 81 years ago, right over here to the left, where all those kayaks and that brown building is. That is the Los Angeles YMCA. Wow. That's where the YMCA, okay, okay. The reason why that was important, there wasn't very many jobs in the summertime, everything involved around the winter. So when they opened that camp, it helped out quite a bit, but it helped out even more than you can imagine because there are 23 camps up here. There are seven YMCA camps. From all those fun camp activities, horseback riding, archery, kayaking, boating, hiking. Yep. We just had our first, job, our first death on the camera. Not only do you live for free, and you eat for free, but you also get paid, and you make a lot of international friends. 
They bring camp counselors in from Australia, from England, from New Zealand, from China, from Japan, from Mexico, from Israel. They come from all over the world to fill the staff at all the great camps up here. This is Boulder Bay. yourself I know it's, it's, guys he's the best he's he's the best hopefully the wind isn't screwing up the sound too much you guys but it's giving you the real feeling of being out here I hope I'm just trying to use excuses but I, I really hope it's helping to make you really feel like you're here. Did you so far? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, Fan fantastic, bro. Like, way more than I ever imagined, yeah. You have so much info that I never even knew. I hear that every day for people that have lived here or been coming up here for 30 years. They don't know about the history. Yeah, blows, blows me away. One of the biggest events happened up here in Big Bear. Happened in the year 1860. There was a hunter that came to Big Bear to hunt grizzly bears. He went broke looking for gold up in Sacramento. And when he got up here, his canteen was low on water. And he knelt down to the stream over there on the North Shore to fill up his canteen. And shimmering in the water all around him was gold. His name was John Holcomb. Side of the hills called Hoka Valley. Over there. It was a huge gold rush in Big Bear. And by one year later, 1861, there were 2,000 people living on the North Shore. And that was bigger than LA at the time. They mined gold commercially in Big Bear for 51 years until 1921. And they took more gold out of Big Bear than they ever got out of Sacramento and Center Smith. No kidding. That's it. That's incredible. This became truly the wild, wild west with the gold rush and everything going on up here. That's incredible. Over here to the left, it's called the owner point. And this house over here gets a lot of attention with that wonderful toilet pole, the beautiful wood siding on that house. And of course, it's got a grizzly bear garden. The toilet pole, the grizzly bear garden came from That's my Alaska. friend's house. together with all their money and their lawyers and they won their case because poor servers tried to take these houses from them under imminent domain they won their case they got to keep their houses they got a 75 year extension they pay a little bit more money for their lease but they're happy about it because these houses can now be rented or sold they're going anywhere from a million and a half to two and a half million that's my friend's Down in house. County, that get big you a brown house. Home. That's what made me move but up, up here. here. Big Bear, you get that a house run. that he, he was talking about that the deadliest catch people live there now. That's my that's one of my best friends in the world, Jordan Groves. His dad, Dr. Gary Groves. That was one of their their many spectacular vacation homes. That's the house I always tell you guys about what made me want to move up here. That's Cove Street, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 I used to hang out there when I was 19, 20, and 21 at that house. We'd get kegs and 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 eat portobellas all the time. <laughs> it was crazy, man. It was crazy. 
Wow, and you said the deadliest catch people own, own, own that house now? Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah, Jordan's family sadly had a, a split up, so I think it was maybe 20 years ago, close to that, that that house got sold, but yeah. Wow. Well, these beautiful houses over here, besides the nice weather that they have, they have a beautiful view. And the view on the other side of the bay, those are the original log cabins cut from the trees on the bottom of the lake for the guys that were building the dam. Wow, that's incredible. They were also on Forest Service land over there. I mean, that is incredible. So they can't cut a tree down, they can't cut a bush, you can't add on, put a driveway, flower garden, anything. Everything must remain the same. So if you want to know what it looked like 140 years ago, it looks just like it does today minus the boats and the cars. Wow, that's, a, that's, babe, it's such a trip. I'm waiting they are to hear Jordan's response. They're on Forest Service land, so they're only allowed to use them from April 1st to October 30th, when we shut down the lake to all boating activities. Or November 30th. Now, for parents or grandparents, the beauty of being able to stay in one of those cabins over there is most of them do not have electricity. So the kids cannot stay inside all day, play video games, or watch TV. Nice. They got to do something we did as kids called go outside and play. <laughs> yep. Remember? I remember. You had to be home when street lights came on. <laughs> and yep. if you weren't, your mom called you by all three names, <laughs> and then you knew you were in trouble. Nicholas Anthony Amstetter. You're grounded, young man. Be like, why? Wow, look at this. That's one of the big water inlets that feed the lake right there. Wow, Paul. A tiki boat. Do you sell ice cream? <laughs> coming soon, coming soon. Coming soon? Right, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Good to see you out here, guys. I'm taking a boat tour right now, and we just drove by your old house on, on the corner of Cove. The most beautiful house I've ever seen in this whole town, bro. It brings back a lot of memories. I miss it a lot. I miss that time of our life. I will. Good to see you again. <laughs> Loud on, bro. Small town. Everybody knows everybody. Especially when you're cool like this guy. This guy is so likable, you guys. It, you, you, you guys better take this tour and ask for Paul. Have Paul be your captain. Make sure captain you take... Paul. Captain Paul. Um, guys, I screwed up. Captain Paul. Captain Paul. I wish, oh. your, I wish your name was Ron so I could call you Captain Ron. That's my favorite movie. <laughs> I love that movie. That's why I do this now. <laughs> <laughs> These houses over here have been used in movies from Cowboys and Indians to uh, horror films, escape convicts because the original authenticity of those log cabins. You know what they remind me of? Remember Lincoln Logs? Yeah. They remind me of Lincoln Logs. <coughs> hey, and if you like trivia, I got some trivia about Lincoln Logs. Trivia, bring it. They were invented by the son of the famous architect, Frank Lloyd Wright. No way. Wonder who made more money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the cabins that looks like Lincoln Logs. Out, on the left side of the boat, as we turn the corner, going all the way down to the dam, are original log cabins. They're built on Forest Service land. Again, so they can't use them in the wintertime. You can only use them from April 1st to October 30th. All right, here we go. Guys, there's so much information you guys are getting that I would have never been able to tell you guys. This is great. One more time, Jordan, if you watch this video, there's there, there goes your, your the beautiful mansion that we had so much fun in, bro. Man, it brings back so many memories, Jordan. Oh, baby.
There's the buoy, oh my gosh! <laughs> this would be a fun job, babe. Wouldn't it, just to be on the lake all day? Yeah. And I like to talk, so it would be perfect for me, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be. It would be. It totally would be. So because of the wind, I'm gonna stand back a little bit. Yeah. Follow me and hang out with me, baby. Okay, perfect. Okay. Last over out here on the lake down on the shore, huh? Big time. I almost didn't bring this jacket. I bring two extra ones just for my gas they get cold. You're awesome, man. Hopefully it breaks my tips up, but yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, just real quick, I was gonna tell you when we go riding. Unless you can take a debit card, I'll fill up your tank and buy you lunch. No, bro, you deserve a tip. This is the greatest experience I've had in Big Bear. So, That's cool. I'm telling you, it's awesome. Now, halfway up the hill right here is the highway, but you can't see these houses on the highway. Hopefully, if you're not looking when you're driving. Now, this one right here, closest to the lake, right in front of you, with the green roof and the trees, right here, this way. Okay. That's the oldest cabin I've been told in the valley at 150 years old. Right there, you guys. Looks like we can see Jen Trampin sitting on the ground. <laughs> see if folks had Jen move away from there. <laughs> 150 years old, you guys. That's the oldest house in this whole area. Right in front area. of us, there's a brown house on top of these rocks up here. And it's not part of service land, like I said. You can't change the equipment. So when they built that house, they built it over a boulder. We get a little closer, there's a breezeway behind the pine tree, and you can see the boulder all lit up by the sunlight. That house was built for, and still owned by the family of, one of the first movie stars ever, that cowboy, by the name of Tom Mix. Tom Mix went from the silent movies into the talkies. Into the talkies. And if you remember the movie Tombstone, Loved it. About why on earth. At the end of the movie, the credits are rolling, and it said Tom Mix cried at Wyatt Earp's funeral. Wyatt Earp visited Big Bear, not as a tourist, but as a gambler, after the OK Corral gunfight. And he met Tom Mix at a poker table. And they became really good friends. And Tom Mix invited him to Hollywood to become a consultant on all the Western movies. Tom Mix family still owns it. They're bird family. They always say hi when we go by. And you can see that breezeway right in the middle of the house. Oh, yeah. And if you look a little closer, you'll see the big boulder lit up by the sunlight right about there. The house, that boulder goes all the way through the house. There's rooms on both sides, front, back, and left and right. Wow, look at that boulder up there, guys. Look at in in that breezeway. That look at that. It allows an access and insulator. Keeps it warmer when it's cold and cooler when it's hot. That's awesome. All these big boulders in the back of the house are built on the house part of the foundation. Something else. Now directly in front of us is the most photographed spot on the lake. That is what we call China Island because of the architecture. But the real legal name is Garston Island. Mr. Garston was the designer and the engineer and builder that built the new dam. Remember I told you the first one filled up in one year? Yeah. Well, more and more ranchers wanted to grow oranges, not only down the hill in Redlands, but in Riverside and all the way down to Orange County. Big Bear Lake was the only year round water source back then. So wow. they needed a bigger dam, a higher dam, wow. to retain more water. And Garston was the man that designed it and built it. Now what had happened, in the year 1901, before the dam was completed, he was in China with his wife on a steamship cruise. She liked it so much, what did he do as a good husband? He bought part of a village. <laughs> they took it apart board by board. They put it on a freighter to L.A. And they brought it to Big Bear on a wagon train. See, he knew his new dam was going to raise the water level by 50 feet. And this rocky hilltop right here would become his own island. 
Straight ahead, guys. Brought it up here on a wagon train. They reassembled it. Now, the line looks familiar, too. You might have seen it in a movie with Tom Cruise no. called The Last Samurai. No way. It is a private island. No trespassing. The only way to get there is by boat. Invitation only. Now, that big tree in the front, the hut behind that, is the communal living room. And the green walkway going up the hill to the first hut, that is the dining room. And the hut to the left is the kitchen. The five remaining huts on the island are all guest quarters. I flew this my drone over this place once. This was by the Irvine Company. They used it for their promotional basis. The only way to get out there is by an invitation. They rebuilt this bridge right here. That bridge had collapsed due to snow load. But two pictures, they restored it to its natural beauty. And if you look at the rocks around the island, you can see different watermarks as the lake level does go up and down depending on the snowfall. And as we come around the corner here, there's Beautiful. a hut on the very back corner of this island that was used by the husband and wife team. They brought in, she was the housekeeper, he was the chef. And they'd actually fish out of the window of the hut to catch fresh trout for their guests staying on the island. There, that's that hut right there. And this big rocky boulders out here in the middle of the bay, on a warm day, you'll see a lot of people swimming from their boats over those rocks and they jump off. Kind of our version of the Acapulco cliff divers. <laughs> and we'll tell you two things, it's higher than it looks and the only safe spot to jump is on the right side. So if you ever come up here and do that, make sure you do it safely. There's boulders under the water. So you gotta make sure you clear those. Is this the right side? That's the right side. That's the right. Okay guys, so yeah. that's the that's the right side over here. And you have different levels you can jump from. We had people jumping yesterday from the top and some from the lower rocks. I can't believe we're Hey look out up there on the hill, there's a big boulder ready to fall in. Oh my oh my gosh. It says Tippy on it. <laughs> Achoo! Right? Look at that thing. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Been there through a couple of big earthquakes. Now this big house up here on top of the hill, beyond the Tippy Rock, belongs to another movie star cowboy. John you Wayne. Might, guys might know him as the singing cowboy. Oh no, not John Wayne. Or better known as Gene Autry. Oh yeah. Gene Autry is the man that started the California Eagles baseball team. He also made over a hundred Western movies. And his family owns KTLA Chuck 5. And if you remember, back at the beginning of the tour, I told you they found water in a big steep granite rock canyon when they were looking for it. Well, this is that canyon. This is where they found the puddles of snow melt. And this is where they decided to blow up these granite rocks with dynamite. Those Italian snow cutters they brought in chipped away at them to make them kind of flat on each side. They put them on top of logs with ropes and donkeys and horses. They pulled those boulders into position to build the 50 foot high dam. That dam is still intact under the water down here in front of the new dam. The new dam that was built and designed by Mr. Garston. Now that dam doesn't look like much from here, but that arch dam was the first of its kind in the world. It's been replicated many times. And when the dam was completed, it was the largest dam in the United States. And Big Bear Lake was the largest man-made lake in the U.S. Wow. We held that distinction and honor for almost 20 years to the end of World War I. That dam has a 250-foot drop on the backside, and it's holding back seven miles of water. It's so an active dam with spillways on either side. And that highway bridge back there used to be one lane sitting on top of the dam. And that's how Bugsy Siegel's men could see the cops coming up over the hill. <laughs> now, if you look over here to the left, up on top of the hill, you can see the roadway and the road signs. You can look above those. You'll see a rock wall coming into view up there. Damn. That rock wall was made as a house. There's four walls. And they were made by those Italian stone cutters. It's the dam and because of that, it looked like a castle in Europe. And that's where they filmed 
the original Frankenstein movie. Wow. Dude, that is you so cool. Big Bird, you got to be an extra. Running up the hill with a torch to burn the monster out of the castle. His name was the Dan Keeper's house was Mr. Knickerbocker. And there's a street in the village called Knickerbocker Lane. And if you went up that street one mile, you would see the largest vertical log cabin in the world that Mr. Knickerbocker built for his family in retirement. There's a gunshot hole in the wall up in that mansion made by Wild Bill Hickok. And there's a plaque next to it. Somebody called him a cheater in a card game. <laughs> Big Bear had been visited not only by White Earth, but Wild Bill Hickok, Andy Oakley, and Buffalo Bill Cody, to name a few of the great Western stars we all know about. Right here is the deepest part of the lake, at about 75 feet deep. And this white buoy line right here is just designed to keep debris and boats from getting down to the dam, because it's still a working dam. Well, they still let water out to irrigate what's left of the orange groves. All right, now we're going to turn around and head east. This could be a little bit warmer. Won't have the wind blowing in our face. Yeah. Now, all these buoys out here to the right are anchored safely to the bottom of the lake. And they're there for you to use. First come, first serve. They don't want any boats pulling in here and throwing anchors. They want to preserve the bottom of the lake for the vegetation that's growing, which is good for the fish and the birds and the bears. The bears. Now you can see a lot more people on the shoreline over here because the first thing you'll notice about the North Shore is how close the highway is to the lake. We see this one right around on our Harleys around the lake. Yes, we do. <laughs> Guys, I get to ride my Harley with, with Captain Paul. Like, how cool is that? I loved him a lot prior to this, but now I'm like, I'm like yeah, starstruck. Yeah, around this corner of the bay right here. There's a beach back there, crescent-shaped beach. A lot of people fishing over here because you can see the highway. You see all the cars parked right there. And it's easy access to bring your gear down to the lake. This beach right here was used in the beginning of a TV show 40 years ago. It's still on Meat TV and it's called Mayberry RFD with Andy Griffith and Ron Howard carrying fish and bowl, whistling and skipping rocks. But some people think they filmed it right there on that beach because it looked like North Carolina. But the real reason is that red house back there belongs to Andy Griffith. No way. And Good. If you got the studios to shoot right there where your vacation home is it helped pay for it wow. the other thing is you look at the north shore over here look how close the houses are on the highway there's no roads or driveways going up to those houses if you want to get up there you got to climb some long staircases and do a lot of switchback trails Way up there at the top of the hill is a big rock formation up there. And those rocks came out of a gold mine. Wow. It's all, that's the deepest gold mine in the whole valley. That one goes down about a mile deep. Wow, guys. That's insane. Plenty of places to park along the highway right here. It's pretty safe. And you know, you easy walk down. There's also porta potties back there. So if you're out here for a while, for our safety, we hope you use porta potties. <laughs> There's a lot of people on the shore, kind of. Okay, babe. Yeah, going this way, it's going to be a lot better for your cold and my now, camera. I told you guys, Big Bear was named for the grizzly bear. And unfortunately, the last grizzly bear was taken in 1922. In order to preserve the ecological balance, safe fishing game, 
brought 25 black bears from Northern California here. And a last estimate, they believe there's 300 bears in this valley. And people often ask, do we ever see them? And of course the answer is yes. And it's usually on trash night. <laughs> they know when to come and look. Mr. Richardson? <laughs> you want a big basket? <laughs> Yogi! <laughs> oh, Yogi. Seriously though, if you ever do run into a bear on the lake shore, a biking trail or a hiking trail, do not panic, do not jump up and down and scream and wave your arms, all that nonsense. Just be still and the bear will leave you alone. Coming up over here on the left shoreline is a barge. It's kind of a beige barge with a green roof right in front of you there. That's the most popular spot on the lake. Yeah, the name of that barge is the SS Relief. <laughs> it is a floating porta potty, but it is self contained. The SS Relief. That's great. Now, coming up over here on the highway, right where that car is going, look above that, there's a brown house, the first brown house, lower down. And we get past these pine trees, get a shot at the staircase that you have to climb to get up to that house. <laughs> it starts here on the highway, and it goes up one section. And it cuts over, goes up another section. Oh. And it goes up another section, and another one. Oh hell no! <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I'm not carrying groceries up those steps. Dang! Look at that, you guys. That's insanity. Look at that right there. Our Lake Arrowhead house had a huge staircase like that, but you could also drive up to the front. Huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You learned it a lot? Dude, 99% I, of the stuff I, I, I didn't know. Well, coming up over here is a bunch of rocks. Looks like a jetty, right? Right along the lake shore? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the end of the highway. It did not go to the dam. And on top of those rocks is a fishing camp that was owned by two TV cowboys. You might know them as Roy Rogers and Andy Devine. They'd come down at night time and sing to their guests while they're having a fish run. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Anyways, the state brought them out in the 1960s so they could make the highway go around the lake, better traffic flow for the tourism. Roy Rogers and his wife Dale Evans started a bed and breakfast, we'll see in a minute. And Andy Devine started a restaurant in town called the Captain Zanker. Very expensive restaurant, but we've been told by many of the employees there that his ghost still haunts the restaurant, but he's a friendly ghost. Then coming up right along the beach here is our sailing club, mostly catamarans. And next to that is the North Shore Marina. Small marina over here, if you're vacationing on the North Shore, you live over here, or you can rent a boat or a jet ski. What do you guys think so far? Pretty awesome, huh? That riverboat there called the Sierra Belle was sitting in a junkyard for almost 40 years. I saw it a couple years ago, wanted to buy it, but one of the other brand new owners got it, fixed it up, make it portable again, and we don't know what they're gonna do with it. I heard an office, I heard a restaurant on the lake but the Sierra Bell is back in alive floating on the lake awesome awesome you all right babe yeah. I'm afraid to ask if if there's a restroom on board because I don't want to no there's not I didn't think so 
Now, one of the really cool things that happened up here in Big Bear four or five years ago, two bald eagles flew into the valley and they nested in a tree. And the state fish and game put a camera in a tree right next to it. And from there, you can see the bald eagles up close and personal, closer than I am to you guys. Jackie and Shadow. And you can see the differences between the female and the male. You can even go back and see where they laid eggs and they successfully hatched some baby eagles on this lake. Last year, the one baby eagle that survived took off for its first flight after three months and it flew right around this boat with a mama bird. Wow. As we going around the lake. Wow. It's taking like 10,000 pictures. Wow. That's awesome, man. I hope Last that happens week, now. Four young bald eagles somehow landed in Big Bear Lake. And so far they have stayed. You can tell they're young, but by their coloring, they're under three years old. As the eagles change, the heads start white now they get old. So we now have five bald eagles that fly around Big Bear Lake, right over here on the North Shore. This is where the eagle's nest is. Over here a little further up. Since GoPro is a terrible camera and the battery always dies, when this one dies, I'm just gonna let you know just so I can, okay. it takes five seconds. I just don't wanna interrupt you because you're doing an amazing job, dude. But I just, just in case I go like that, I, please, thank you, thank you. Now, coming up over here on the North Shore, you can see a fishing pier out over the water. And that's part of our public launch ramp. We have two public launch ramps on Big Bear Lake, and both are on the North Shore. This one is the West Ramp, and very cleverly, the one on the other end of the lake is called the East Ramp. Now, if you want to launch a boat or watercraft on our lake, you can do it for free at a public launch ramp. But they will inspect your boat and your trailer to make sure it doesn't have any koala muscles attached to it. The koala muscle is an invasive species that came on craters from Scandinavia to the Great Lakes. And from there, it got attached to a boat and trailer that somebody took to the Colorado River. And that muscle grows so fast and so rapid, it has infected the entire Colorado River, all the lakes on the river, and all the lakes in Southern Arizona, Southern Nevada, and Southern California, except for Big Bear and Arrowhead. Wow. Wow. It's not a bad muscle. It's as small as the pinky thumbnail that you have, but it eats a lot. It eats all the vegetation. And that's not good for the fish. And it's also small enough to get caught up in the pumps that are in the lake that would clog up the pump lines. So we're very diligent about making sure there's no clog of muscles when you come to our lake. <laughs> those long staircases that people have to climb up on the North Shore to get to their house on the hill. Yes. Well, some of the homeowners got smart. And they went up into the hills into the abandoned gold mines. They took out the railroad tracks and they installed them on their hillside. The railroad tracks and the gold cart that they used to get up and down are over 100 years old. Wow, guys. And there's three operating sets on the North Shore still. There's one we can see from the lake coming up right here by this red house. The red house up by that big beach right there. We get a little further along, you can look up on the hillside and you'll be able to see the railroad tracks getting up to that hill. What a great idea. I think it's cool. Yeah. It's totally cool, man. 
It's a good excuse to go shopping all the time. Just to ride your little railway back and forth. Right. Well, there it is. You can see it going up the hill. They put it on top. They need to go from and go on the shop. Oh, yeah. Another yeah. Look at that. Around. It's right there. There's no roads and no driveways. We just go up the hill now. Guys, that's awesome. Okay, right over here is the house with 2 white picket fences. One down low by the water, and one up high by the house. Yes, I, yeah. That's called the Windy Point Inn. That's one Roy Rogers and Dale Evans built. Each one of the five bedrooms in that dead business and the dining room are decorated with memorabilia from Roy Rogers. belongs to the star and the producer of the number one TV show for the last four years called Yellowstone. Wow. That is Kevin Costner's house. No kidding. No way. Tatanka. Tatanka. <laughs> Hopefully it's still be his after the divorce is final. <laughs> yeah. This whole area right here is called Windy Point. It wasn't always flat with that seawall right there. It was a sandy slope, and they built that seawall, filled it in, and then put these multi-million dollar homes on it. Kevin's was for sale last year for 9.1 million. He took it off the market. But if you bring your checkbook, I get who take 9 million for it today. <laughs> I can make that happen. I left it at home. <laughs> now, this bay right here is called Grout Bay. Okay, this is grout. You know, bay. that's what they called sand back in the day. Grout Bay. Remember the 8,000 barrels of cement? Yeah. You gotta mix it with sand. And they got it from right here. Because over here on the North Shore, when it snows on that steep mountain right there, it melts really quick because it's in the sun all day. Then it washes all the sandy soil down into the bay. Also, at the end of that bay is Captain John's Marina, small marina where you can store your boat or rent a kayak or paddle board. It's also the town of Fawnskin, an old gold mining town. And up there on the hill, halfway up, there's a light colored roof right here. Yeah. That is Woody Harrelson's house. Right there, you guys. Woody Harrelson from Cheers, where everybody knows your name. The white Man Can't Jump and The Hunger Games. That's what I was going to say, White Man Can't Jump. Now the brown house to the left of his, three quarters of the way up the hill with the brown roof, that belongs to Shirley Jones, the mom on the Partridge family. Wow. Also living over here, there's quite a few actors, Mark Mall from Night Court, they call him the Bull, and a few soap opera stars. They like to be over here in Bonskin because there's nothing happening. It's very quiet. There's one restaurant, which is eh, <laughs> they have a moose lodge and they have a convenience store for selling alcohol. Also, it's where the eagle's nest is over here. And yep. those trees right up there. Up there, you guys. Now, directly in front of us, that big white mushroom hanging out in the middle of the lake. That is an observatory. And is a solar observatory. We are a mile and a quarter closer to the sun. And with 300 days of sunshine, in all four seasons, they're able to monitor the solar players. You would think the they have on Earth. You would think at like 50 million miles, one mile doesn't really make a difference, you know? Right? There's only two solar observatories oh, in the, the United sun's, States. The sun's like 50 million or like something miles away. It's on the big island of Hawaii, up on the volcano. Mauna Kea. Or maybe it's on top of Mauna Loa. And then back there in the trees, behind the observatory, is the Serrano Campground, named after the Serrano Indians. And there's about 200 camping sites in there. You okay, honey bunny? Are you sure? Are you sure? You look 
straight ahead, past the observatory. You can see the other end of the lake. Oh, I might like that. Looks like there's cars driving on water down there. That's the Stanfield cutoff. Oh, yeah. That's the road you take to go around the lake. Right over there, guys. The dam, which we were just at, to that Stanfield cutoff down there at the end of the lake. It's seven miles long down the middle. 22 miles of shoreline, and right about here is the widest part of the lake at about a mile and a half wide. Wow. Look at how, this is huge. Wow. This is insane. Look at how wide this is, you guys. Look at this. Watch this. It's like a real lake. Lots of fun things to do here in Big Bear, including the Big Bear Zoo. That zoo is a rescue zoo where they take care of wounded animals, they nurse them back to health, and they release them. If they can't, they take good care of them. Yes, they do. If you went to the zoo, you can see grizzly bear, black bear, and brown bear. You can see a snow leopard, a lynx, a mountain lion, a fox, a wolf. You can see flying squirrels, bald eagles, falcons, hawks, owls, flying squirrels and just about every other Indian in the saddle. It's an alpine zoo, and there's only two alpine zoos in the United States. The other one's in Colorado. In order to be an alpine zoo, you've got to be above 6,000 feet. I can't believe we're no, we, we haven't overheated again. Knock on wood. Uh, As we cut across uh, got the lake, it. you can see the downside, you can see the slopes of Snow Summit, one of our two ski resorts. The other one on the left ridge over there, you can't see it, is Bear Mountain, where the zoo and the golf course is, where your host hits the ball a ton, about 300 yards. <laughs> That's right. That's right, you guys. Now, Snow Summit is open in the summertime. You guys hear that? You can go up to the top of the hill and have lunch. Or, if you're brave enough, go take your mountain bike up on the back of the chair to the top of the hill. And then they unload you very carefully. And what you're supposed to do is pedal down the mountain without crashing and killing yourself. <laughs> it's a very popular sport. <laughs> Very busy. <laughs> Mountain biking was gone for about five years due to a fatal accident. They brought it back about seven years ago. It is such a popular sport that has increased the business in the valley from the Airbnbs and bees and the restaurants to the hotels. About 35% gross increase in our summertime activities with the mountain biking. We now have a second hill you can mountain bike on because last year we purchased Snow Valley. They also have a mountain bike park, not quite as challenging as the Snow Summit. I say we on those ski resorts. That's because most of us ever go on the lake. We're we'll at the resorts in the wintertime. That's where your host and I met. We were both cooks up there for a while. Yes, we were. He, he got me the job there, you guys. He, I did, I he did got me that. the job. <laughs> yeah, you've done a lot for me, bro. Yeah. Babe, right here. Down there in the water, about 20 feet deep, in front of each one of our two resorts here on the lake, is a gigantic pump. And that pump pumps water to the top of the mountain. And when the weather's just right, with the help of a movable sprinkler system, they shoot that water about 15 feet into the air, and it falls to the ground as snow. Some people call it man-made snow, but it's exactly the same thing that falls from heaven, frozen water. Now I do get asked all the time, why do you take water out of the lake if it's low to make snow? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I answer it the same way every time. What do you think happens to the snow when it melts? <laughs> and it goes right back in the lake.
we recover about 90% of the water that they pump out of the lake up to make snow. And the mountains do pay for the water charge. They do. I didn't realize that. I thought they got it for free. I thought they got it pumped for free. Okay. Over here on the right side of the boat, up on the hill, you see a grassy meadow up there. That's where Ray and that I. That was the very first. That's where you'll see in the hiking video tomorrow or tomorrow. We we walked up to the like top of it there, to the right. That dirt side, babe, on the right hand side. And just stood there for about 10 minutes looking down. It's really amazing. But then we went up way up to the top. And now they turned it into a fun zone where they have a wonderful roller coaster. They have a zip line. They have a go kart track. They have a toboggan run that runs on wheels. And on the winter time, you can go up on an electronic sidewalk and slide down the hill on an inner tube. Or if you want, you can sit at the bar, have a warm drink, while the kids slide down or freeze and you just get to watch. What do you guys think so far, huh? What do you guys think, everybody? Awesome. You enjoying yourself? Yeah, this is so this is fun. awesome. Yeah. Your marina is called Big Bear Marina, correct? Big Bear Marina. Okay. Guys, as far as I'm concerned, that's the only marina up here. There's five marinas, but we're the best. Defin definitely. Definitely. We have more boats to rent than any other marina, jet skis, paddle boards, and kayaks. Well, there's a couple things that happened today, guys, I know for sure. One is you picked a beautiful day to come out here and of our lake and our activities. Yes. The other thing is, there's lots of things to do in Big Bear, and I for one appreciate it when people come out on the tour boat. Absolutely. And I hope you guys can tell from our narration that I love what I do, and I hope you learned a lot about Big Bear Lake and our history, the gold rust, the Indians, all the star homes and films that were made here. We do appreciate it. And if you get back and you do a Yelp review, we appreciate Yelp reviews. I'll do that for sure. Yeah. For sure. If you liked it, I'm Captain Paul out of Big Bear Marina. And if you thought it sucked <laughs> and you didn't like it at all, I'm Captain Jack Sparrow <laughs> out of Pine Knot Marina. <laughs> I leave him laughing. This guy, man. This guy. Wow. Oh yeah, babe. That would be cool. Man, imagine living there. We'd probably be sleeping in the tent every night. I know. It'd be awesome. I'd be getting up and going in and out of the house all night. Just use the bathroom. It would be nice just to know that we have a nice house like that. Really? Dude. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. They rent it out a lot. I'll bet. I'll bet. I bet you they're cleaning up. Right? Clean it up, dude. We got to talk about that someday, maybe investing in some property. You, you want to talk about the Pines on your broadcast? Yeah, please. The Pines restaurant, the best place to sit and watch the sunset on the lake. They have the tavern and a five star white table golf restaurant. And our party Saturday night to have live jazz. A friend of mine does all the maintenance there and they invited us with a private parking space and a dinner for the 4th of July for our anniversary at, at the Pines. Is that your anniversary? Yeah. Uh, no, no, J July 18th, but they're, they're going to do everything right for us. Cool. Yeah, yeah. How did you hook this guy? <laughs> he was so single and independent. He told me he fell until he fell in love with that and died. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. I wasn't even trying. <laughs> no, she she wasn't. I wasn't. You know, it's kind of the way I found my girl. I went through a horrible divorce, and I was just miserable and unhappy. And I was hitting in a bar, and some friend of mine introduced me to this girl. And she goes, don't get any ideas. I'm not dating. I don't even want to buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're madly in love. Oh, how cute. 
live together? Paul, I, yeah. Seeing you happy makes me really happy. We should we should go grab a bite to eat sometime. Absolutely. For sure, I would love that. And then I I know this isn't part of the cruise either, but when do you think you'll have time to go for lunch and a ride? I usually go for rides now on Mondays and Tuesdays. This week I can't because of the Fourth of July. Okay. So we'll be going for a ride on like Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. Okay. Please. You got it. Thank you. Oh, uh, they're going on a rescue. Oh, really? Rescue? Yo ho, yo, yo ho, a pirate's, pirate's life for me. A shiver me to bring me down. Dun 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 dun. Yo ho, a pirate's life for me. One of these days I'm going to learn the other verses. Yeah. I was thinking that in my head. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be able to sing the rest with him. <laughs> that was the drunk version. <laughs> hey, a pirate joke. Do you know why pirates are called pirates? No. Because they are. <laughs> I'm going to use that. That's part of the tour. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to pull into the dock here. We might bump off the front bump there, so be careful. I want you to chip a fall. Maybe I will trip and fall. I've always wanted a free tour boat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they are so cute. They are so adorable. How are your dogs doing, Paul? Great. Good, man. Good. My best friends. Great dogs, man. Great dogs. Paul used to live right on the golf course, babe. Oh, in nice. in this big, beautiful three-story. I, I mean, babe, is big three-story. Big, big oh, place. Wow. The only problem was I had bad knees. It was thirty-three steps. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost there was a small chance I was gonna rent a room there for a short period of time, but right. And even at the new house. Yeah, you yeah. Were gonna do that. That's right. Yeah. You yeah. should see it now. Oh, dude. It doesn't look anything like it used to. Dude, come here, man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that you so much, so Paul. Awesome. I hope you guys had a good time. You did you? such a great job. I enjoyed it so much. I had an amazing you know, time. I say what I mean. I love what I do. I can tell. This is the greatest job in the valley. Oh, I can tell. So. You know what, dude? Text me your Venmo or your Cash App. I don't have either one of those. Okay. Would filling up your gas tank and taking you to lunch be? You take me to lunch just so we could spend time together. But well, you don't have to. I do. Oh no, no, no. I love it. No, bro. Thank you, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm. You deserve a huge, huge tip, buddy. Thank you. Right on. Well, I'm out of here for today, but I got seven more days in a row to work. And you do three, three tours a day? Eleven, yeah. one. And I'm just recovering from my vocal cord surgery. So oh. It's gonna be tough. Well, you, you know what? You're doing great. That was that was even more. I expected that, that it was going to be great, but you really. That's amazing. Yeah, really well, most you're people awesome. Don't know about our valley and our history, and when I, they learn it, they go, "Wow!" I had I no point idea. Point that out to friends and relatives, and they come and this and that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of history here. Yeah, a I, lot of history. You educated me a lot, and I and for what I do for my YouTube channel, I should know all this stuff. Well, but I didn't know 99 percent of the stuff you told me. I do do on the tour because. People don't want to hear you talk all the time, but I try to space it out. But um, if I can be of any help anytime, thanks, you know man. I will. Thank you. Whether we're riding together or whatever yeah, else. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Captain Paul. <laughs> so, yeah, next week we will meet up. Make sure your gas tank on the thing is empty so I can. Uh, <laughs> no. Where $10 fills up my gas tank. Uh, thank you. Love you. Uh, I love you too, man. Let me know when you post this. Absolutely. It, um, it'll be this weekend. But yeah, trust me, dude. I'll I'll send you a link to your phone right away. Okay. Yeah. Dude, great job. Thank you. See you later, guys. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You guys take care, and uh, this guy does a wonderful job narrating. Oh, it's a fantastic cast. Oh, it's yeah, guys. It's... Couldn't ask for anyone better. What an awesome staff. Thank you guys again. You guys awesome. absolutely rock. I'm glad that you guys had a great time. Fantastic. Fantastic. Later, guys. Thank you. All right, guys, so let me take the camera off real quickly. And
Yeah, to totally, totally way to go, Paul. That that was awesome. All right, babe. Ready for some burgers? I guess. Yeah, you are. Were you getting a little bit nervous when we were going out? How cold it got? Uh, hey, thanks, man. I just no, not really. It just gets so windy that I'm like, I turn into a popsicle quick. <laughs> a popsicle quick. <laughs> yeah. Hi guys. There's Paul's caddy. Oh yeah. He's got a caddy and as you guys know. What an amazing guy. I'm he's, so grateful we got to do that today. So am I. He did a terrific job. But yeah guys, so that's gonna be the end of our little boat tour today. Hopefully Thank you for watching. It was so good to be here again with you guys. I've missed you all so much. So, and hope. Sorry, oh no, no, sorry. Go ahead, baby. No, it's I'm been good. Go ahead. okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Hopefully, you guys didn't get too much sound, like wind, wind issues uh, on the way out. But, um, and I hope you guys heard absolutely everything that Captain Paul had to say. But uh, yeah, thank you guys again for everything. We really appreciate you. We love you guys very much. Thanks for always supporting the channel. Thanks for all the well wishes on my sobriety. I appreciate it, you guys. And uh, yeah, we will talk to you guys soon. It's June 28th, 2023. Peace out, guys.